Good evening, everybody. What's up? Uh, my name is not Dion. Dion is here, but he'd like me to introduce his show. It's called Old Rope. None of us actually know what it means. Dion, this is your show presented by Triumph and Disaster. What is the show? This show is a little bit of old rope uh, for those out there who don't uh, know the same. But it's um, basically old rope is, is cheap rope, maybe quite bad rope even. Um, and, and that's about the extent of our maybe our wisdom and conversation. So we hope that um, at least uh, it's at least it's cheap. <laughs> it's a great segue to our first our first guest. Uh, please introduce yourself, Mr. Cal Budge. Oh, when you said cheap, I assumed you were talking about Mabes. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, did you not? Did you not see the NBA? Did you? Oh, is it too soon, Mabes? Too soon? No. <laughs> 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 and Mabes has gone silent already. <laughs> Wonderful. No uh, and introductions, please, Budgie. Oh, I'm I'm sadly a uh, someone that looks up to Dion and uh, and loves what he does. Uh, love hearing about his journey. It's always pretty insightful. But um, tragically, I'm friends with the other two clowns on this phone call. So uh, um, yeah, I don't really know how I got roped in, to be honest. And regretting my semi turtleneck style jumper that I've got on, it was probably a poor choice for coming onto a video. <laughs> Turtleneck, a camera looking up into the nose, four four chins. Yeah, I, I You're looking good there, bud. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Mr. Mabes, introduce yourself. G'day. Uh, yeah, I'm Brett. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you really want to know, but I uh, I know I know these two guys from I don't know, just hanging out and chewing the fat and talking about talking about some cool some cool stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm involved in the ag sector, uh, based out of Based out of uh, the Waikato, so um, we're we're not in too bad a too bad a space just at the minute, which is which is good. Um, and uh, yeah, no, Robet just gave me a gave me a ring, and I thought, mate, I'll jump online and give him a hand. I don't know if I can add too much value, but uh, I'm mate. old, so I've got a bit of wisdom. <laughs> oh, you, you yeah, forgot so the, the, the... Mid, mid sort of uh, how far through the pork roast are you at the moment? What's the <laughs> With an update, we are cooking pork roast. No, I've got a, I got a mate, I got a mate who's a chef, which funnily enough he doesn't have a lot to do right at the minute. So, um, rung him this morning for some some tips. So, basically, all I really did was I smothered it in some olive oil, bit of a uh, bit of salt uh, in the oven for five hours, and then I've set my alarm a couple of hours to go, and I whip the, uh, whip the oven from one forty up to two thirty, and uh, get some crackle happening at the end of that. <laughs> Ten minutes is the is the game plan, so we'll see what happens. Mabes, you're cooking with Mabes. We're, we're cooking with, I'm really impressed, Mabes. You've managed to get through an entire two minutes without bringing up the Chiefs. So well done. It's yeah, they're on, they're on. Like a lot of things, they're on pause right at the moment. That is true. Um, but let's bring as good as your last victory, to, though, eh, Mabes, against the Blues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dion, we've got structure for the show. What is the the structure that we're going to bring? And I think maybe it's a, it's actually quite a good one. Feel free to, to lead us off. I think it's, oh, I think it's oh, decent. Yeah, don't talk about too much. No, I, we, we're really four people, four guys bring one idea to the table for the conversation. That was about the extent of it. But um, can I go first, maybe? I, I think you're the only one with an idea so Set far. So go for it. Set Set time. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I just have this, well, we're fifth, day 15 of the lockdown, and I've, uh, I've finally had a bit of an epiphany, I think. And um, because I come, I grew up up on the west coast of, uh, and this, growing up there, that you always taught about swimming on the west coast and and looking out for rips, uh, and understanding the the sort of sea, uh, and water safety. And um, so one of the things you don't do in a rip is you you don't try to swim too hard against it. You actually you know once you realise you're caught in a rip and in trouble, um, the best idea is to let the rip take you, uh, and then as once you're sort of um, going with it you can sort of try to swim across it or just let it take you out the back and then you can swim across and and, um, and swim in with the tide and I sort of feel like that's a great analogy for where we're at right now with this lockdown I'm, I'm I've sort of I think I've spent the first couple of weeks trying to fight it uh, and realized I was just starting to uh, lose my will a bit and and I wasn't winning um, and I feel like a little bit now that I've realised that the way to do it is just it's going to happen. It's happening whether you like it or not, and it's um it's all around us. And and maybe the best way to get through this is to let it go with it, um, what, and then let's see where it ends up. I think that's interesting as as well though, Dan. Because remember when I had interviewed the last time, it, you were in the office the day before it was day mm -hmm. one, right? And so it was almost like you were the the the, the one day prior. And even just the, I mean, in, in 
in two weeks, I imagine, because every day the market's changing, things are changing, laws, business, every everything is just a, a wave on wave for it. And it's that the sense of overwhelmness that I guess you, you can't you can't fight what is already happening. You, it's actually a really good analogy. Actually, you said it before, and I was like, I know it. Get it? It's yeah, yeah. Well, good I mean, analogy. good idea. It end up where it ends up, right? And and I mean, you, 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 I think fighting it is, is is sort of pointless and uses a lot of energy, you know, mental energy and worry or or just and and if those friends keep ringing up and going oh you know where's this you know where are you going to be in a week month six, six months and i'm like i don't know i've got no idea but, I, but the worst thing i can do is sort of try and fight it it's going to end up where it ends up and i think that, you know once you start maybe transitioning across to that sort of thinking i i feel like that's a bit energizing you know the last sort of day of it i've just felt my energy come back a little bit with it and go oh well we'll, we'll see where this rides um and then adapt or evolve uh as we go but um you know try to clearly you've got to keep paddling under the water as well just to stay afloat though hmm. I, I found like i'm not so much probably saying yes to everything's not quite right but certainly not saying no to anything you know i think we're the world's changing so much and everything that we're everything that we knew was so different so quickly that i don't think anything's off the table anymore and i, I think every you know, whether it's trying to re-energize and restructure the global sporting calendar. I think, you know, I spent four hours yesterday trying to talk through how we put 53 tournaments into a few weeks. And it's just been really awesome going into that process, not actually saying no to any of the ideas, all of the things that previously we've gone absolutely can't touch that, to now be actually going, no, we've got to give it a crack. Well, let, let's look at that. Let's... You know, no idea is a bad idea. What what can we do? And I think it's been quite energizing for our industry to, to, to turn around and go, you know, let's tackle some of these issues that we otherwise would never have put on the table. It yeah, I been, mean, I, sorry, sorry, go. I was just going to say, that must have been heartbreaking for you right before this with, you know, the PH Classic or, so the, you know, the surfing to be sort of pulled. Uh, you know, that, that, that was going to be one of those great events for New Zealand, I felt. Hmm. Yeah, it, it was gutting, mate. And um, yeah, to be honest, the first sort of forty-eight hours, I, I sulked. I was, yeah, you know, I was real down and gutted around, you know, three years of your life to try and make this happen, and it gets pulled the day before, literally five minutes after we put the finishing touches on the last piece of setup. Um, it, it was literally a five-minute, yeah, you know, we we got five minutes notice after we tools down, um, and so we're we're pretty gutted. Kelly was in town. It was going to be awesome, and, and mate, I, the first couple of days, I, I. I moped, I worried about my own financial position, I, I worried what was going to happen. But then you started getting all the other phone calls and you started hearing what the food vendor that had just, yeah, you know, the little food truck that's margin is nothing. Mm. You know, and they'd, they'd brought enough food for, for 30,000 people that week that Jeez. now had no, nothing they could do with it. And you kind of go, you know what, you know, we're, we're not doing too bad. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, are, are really hurting and, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of made you feel a little bit better in, in, a, in a way. And I've, I've sort of, as, as crap as it was, and, and it was hard to go through, I've kind of now sort of turned it to a to a position where I'm going, man, this is this is epic. It's the longest I've been in New Zealand for eight years. I'm, I've got a two-year-old daughter that I'm getting to spend all day, every day with. Um, it's actually been bliss. And you know, the, while there's a, there's a heap of reasons for your mental health to be real challenged at the moment, on the flip side, I don't think I've ever felt better mentally as I'm, I'm getting to do things that actually matter, um, mm. which has been pretty cool. That's cool, dude. Yeah, no, I, 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 agree, I agree, Carl. I think it's, um, yeah, and, and with what you were saying before as well, uh, Dion, is that yeah, there's no point fighting it because, um, you know, it's, it, it's something that's totally out of our control. Um, uh, you know, like, start with the virus is going to do what it's going to do. The government's going to do what they're going to do, which I personally think is probably probably the right thing, uh, looking at the results. So that's fine. But that's all kind of, you know, as you say, it's like sort of worrying about the weather, uh, which in our industry affects us, but worrying about it doesn't actually do much about it. So you've got to, you've got to sit and look at what the, what the cards have, have dealt you. Um, you know, and I, I hear so many people, uh, especially busy, busy people talking about how time poor they are, you know, and like this is a, this is a really cool opportunity to, to cash in on your on your time um and i know personally i had 67 flights last year and it, it's it's a way i'm away from home a lot i'm sort of sitting in airport lounges a hell of a lot and, and on planes even longer you know so so all of a sudden i've got a ton of time back um and and i'm looking at that as a real a real positive thing and i mean how many times have 
have we been busy in in business and sort of wanting to push the pause button and someone's kind of done it for us and although hey my heart goes out and i'm very sympathetic to a lot of businesses that, that are going to get their ass kicked over the next little while um you know i mean the, the way that the way that i'm looking at it is very much that you know life's still going on it's slowed down the safety cars on the track but but hey the, the checkered flag will fall and, and we and we really want to be ready as best we can for that you know we can actually you know the race is on pause but the cars are still sort of going yeah. slowly around the circuit you can you can take your time and uh, and really i guess look at exactly what what you need to be able to do um and then other some other notes here i've just made is that you know you're like, making I guess, notes I mean, well we got notes <laughs> really you got, you got, you got notes I got a pen. <clears throat> um yeah, like I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the times to be able to cope, cope with bad scenarios is, is is to look at what the worst case scenario is, you know. Um, and look, hey, look, if you own a business and that sort of stuff, and um, and you're a reasonably onto it person, then hey, you're going to bounce back. It's not ideal. You've still got your family, still got your health, mm. you know. Just go back to go back to worst case scenario. But but as I said, right right from the front, and I agree with with Dion that there's certainly no point fighting it because it doesn't do you any good. I've taken a heap of learnings. Just go surfing, right? Oh no! Too soon, bro. Get a jail. You go to jail for that these days. I missed what you said. I feel like they need to stop arresting the or just giving tickets to the surfers. That's got to stop. I'm just not. I'm not down with that. It's like, come on, you know. It was the one thing keeping us sane up here. Tell them all. But it's been super cool. I um, I've got a two-year-old, as I say, and and. For everyone a day, we've been worried around when she's locked up, you know, when she gets two days at home, we've got to go take her out. She's got to go to Cali Tarleton's or the zoo or whatever it might be. She can never be at home for long periods of time. And watching her up here for the last couple of weeks has been a real good... Like, it's so true that you learn so much from kids. Like, literally, we gave her a spoon and a bucket of sand and she played for like an hour. And I was like, it was just the simplest things that made... Mm. You know, it, it, it wasn't all the flash... It wasn't all the stuff that we've become used to in society that we need... For our own happiness it was literally the most simple crap of having mum and dad actually around and her playing with a spoon and sand it was like then life was okay was like, you can take so much away from watching what they get up to this that they've got a much more simplistic view than what we like to complicate our own worlds all the time hmm. I, Rebe- I agree carl I, I learn so much off you and robert all the time <laughs> 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 Uh, have you got one of your beers down there, Mabes? You got to you got to show off your own product. You got have you got one? Not in, Go get some good oil. My te- this is my this is my temporary this is my before, temporary so uh, office in my bedroom. <laughs> this is my temporary office in my bedroom, so I don't have any on hand, but I can go and grab one if you want me to. Yeah, I think you should. Actually, I could I could probably get my wife to get me one, but <laughs> I don't, you're not allowed to swear on this program, eh? You can very shit. It's totally fine. <laughs> but 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 tread yeah. carefully. Well, it won't be me. It'll be what I get told when I go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe's yeah. certainly winning that for sure. Paul, how much yeah. sanded she? Great point, Carl. Uh, great, Quite a lot. See, great, great perspective, Carl. Um, and the famous words of Monty Python from Glenn Moretti says, uh, look on the bright side of life. Craig Cotton, a uh, great analogy down. My feeling is we're all part of a, a force sampling campaign of what the future will or could be. So writing it out and being open, collaborating and preparing for how we swim back in together. See, Craig? Yeah, Hi, Craig. yeah well, we're, the tide will turn, right? And we've just got to be ready to catch those waves on the way in, I think. Um, they might not be the ones we thought we were riding at the start, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I've won a little thing that I, I just sometimes bugs me a little bit when we're, I've been noticing a lot of us at the time, it's that sort of somehow we're turning the, the pandemic into a global competition. And it's like, you know, it's a lot of reporting about how we're doing against other countries or, or, you know, or every time someone writes something nice about New Zealand, we sort of have this um, uh, need that seems to, that we want to, the media wants to sort of go and, tell us what the Washington Post said about New Zealand or what did the Prime Minister of such and such country say? And it's like, I always just sort of feel like, why don't we just, why do we need to do that? It, it sort of like undermines our own sense of being and confidence. You know, like we are a great nation, you know, we are doing great things. But I think we should just sort of give up on the comparing all the time and, and certainly on the needing to, to sort of be endorsed. I, I, I don't know, is it, you're overseas more than us, Rebecca. Is it, do you think it's a fair comment? Yeah, the um, 
I'm just thinking how to, to, to word it because the, the, a lot of the drivers from most of those outlets are on the title for the click. So it comes more to the advertising <laughs> revenue of, of it opposed to the substance of potentially sometimes what's within it. But that's probably a, a, something for a different thing. But what I what it feels like from from what I've seen across all of it is there seems like there's a, it's a very clear unity of what New Zealand is doing together. And, and in America, it's very much patchy of like, that's, it's not us. It's like, that's them, not us. Like even West coast, East coast, um, Midwest Bible belt, like these different pockets that are very like, even today, someone was saying, Oh yeah. You know, like, Oh, we're way better than them. Like that we we've done it, you know, and it, it, it's, it's a, without sport. Funnily enough, there's still competition. It's kind of depressing. Cause I kind of see it as it's more, it's team human, right? We're all stuffed. We're all in this together. Nothing until, well, it is, as long as everything's all cut back down, it's, you know, I think it's kind of sad in some ways that even at a global level, they're still trying to battle off versus 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 in, in some small way, which which sucks. I, yeah. I guess with, with so much doom and gloom around in the, in, well, not just the media, but just in the world at the moment, I, I guess that's just a way of, you know, pumping your own tyres up, you know, um, yeah. at the detriment of other people. So that's just unfortunately what we do. <laughs> I think it's that small small nation mentality though too, right? Yeah, you know, it's political likes. You know, where we just seem desperate to, you know, that we're we're big, we're mighty, we're doing great things. And um, I don't know I've always sort of been on the team of if you're doing great things, you don't tend to need to talk about it. But um, yeah, you know, when you're not, you tend to have to go out and and seek that um, you know, that uh, relevance in, in other ways. And I don't know, maybe there's just the fact that we are small and um, yeah, we we just get stoked when Washington Post knows we exist. We're not part of Australia. I mean, we're I think the, we're on the map. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that we, you know, you've you've done some great things, you know, with the ASB Classic and bringing down, you know, Serena and all the different stars and that. I mean, but I don't. I sense there's a bigness to that and how we and how that's run, you know. And I think that people want to come to a place when they sort of sense that the event speaks for itself. Mm. Um, and I feel like this New Zealand, we've got such a great country. We don't need the endorsement. You know, and I, I just feel it, we, we, we need to play with a bit more confidence, know and understand how, how great we are and in, in terms of the, the beauty of our country and the people and all that we've got. I don't know. I, I just sometimes when I read it, and particularly at a time like this, when there's not a lot of good news. Yeah. You sort of cling on to those things. And for me, it makes me feel small and not bigger, you know, when I see it. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Right. I think we end up feeling smaller because it, it, we are seeking that... Um, you know, that approval from everyone else where, you know, uh, uh, let's just go and do what we do well because we are actually doing it great and, and let's just keep focusing our energies in the right way, not having to seek relevance all the time. Yeah, I, I heard that come up um, just in the ag sector a little bit, like obviously farmers are beating their chest a little bit um, at the moment, sort of, you know, they've had their had their ass kicked a little bit um, in terms of, you know, killing the environment and cows being the worst, worst things in the world. And I, I think, um, you know, they're, they're a pretty hard working bunch that are the you know the backbone of this economy and have been a hell of a lot but there is a bit of a sense of you know that the, the chest beating's going a little bit too much and and there is sort of some calls i guess to say yep just keep doing it and you'll get your day in the sun don't you don't need to go and tell everyone about it mm. yeah um, well you fall pretty mighty i mean we've all we've all figured you know experienced it previously you know if we beat ourselves up you fall pretty quickly too yeah, and, yeah. and maybe if we just focus on what we what we want to maintain rather than uh, you know trumpeting mm. what we're doing, we, we might find ourselves in a far better position. Uh, Dick Wright says, Brett Maber, how's that bloke going to inspire me? <laughs> 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 do you know Dick? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, oh, did you see you my did. golf course I built in the backyard? Did that not inspire you? Um, <laughs> Maybe, uh, you inspired me when we were playing at the hills. And uh, we're suddenly we're, when we're playing with a club pro, and there's a there's a, a long uh, part five dog leg left, and Mage gets up to the tee box. Stop it! I'll finish the story and, then. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and turns out and says to the to the pro, "Can I can I make that bend? Can I can I go over the tree?" Then the the pro goes, "Nah, mate, not even the not even when we have the New Zealand Open here, do the guys go over it?" And he just turns and looks at us, and goes, "Budgie." We don't talk about playing conservatively in the 19th and proceeds to go and birdie the, the par five. Uh, you inspire me daily, mate. Greatest, greatest sporting moment of my life. Um, Actually, Stephen, only sporting moment uh, of my life. But. Uh, Budgie, uh, Stephen Avami uh, uh, says, Budge, spoken like a true Pukekohe high school legend. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a fine graduate of Pokey High. Are the only people watching this people you know? <laughs> it's at, at the it's moment, my mum, people that went to my Dick, wedding. and Stephen. <laughs> 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 You know, the, the Pukekoe Grammar School, I prefer to call it, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, no, we, we, we got a, a fine education there. I don't think any of it was schooling related, but we, we somehow managed to progress. I don't but, know. But, Budget, when you just, you just telling Dion about just how good you were at c- cricket just before, right? You were, you were talking some good. <laughs> did, did you oh, want to finish that story? i stories on that than anyone. Hey, Budge, you can, you just, I, you can talk to... I was more intrigued with his uh, advice to read about the um, using Granny Smiths for the apple sauce rather than the red <laughs> yeah. apples. That I thought I know, that was, right? I mean, that, you've got to be sharing that. I mean, what's the insight there? Is the Granny Smith is a little bit more acidity, is it? What's the. Well, I'm currently studying a little bit about wine at the moment, Dion, and you know, there's something around how long the, uh, you know, the, the studying skin that takes is called drinking it. So it's, um, you know, I don't know, maybe it's something yeah. in how the acids uh, impact the sweetness. I, I, I don't know, but um, yeah. I feel between Mabes' uh, <laughs> pork lesson and, and, and my knowledge of apple based uh, culinary delights, it's, um, I feel like Jamie Oliver should be concerned at the moment. I, I, I feel like there's something brewing here. Brett, can you just go get your, your beer with the good oil to show you've got your yeah. logo on your own beer? It's just it. flipping epic. Well, well yeah, that Brett, was one of the best marketing things I've seen. Well, it was dope. That, I need to give, I need to give a mate a shout out. This guy, friend, old friend, um, Daryl, who set up a site called Good To Go. So he's sort of out, out there promoting those essential uh, products that are online. So if you're, if you're confused as to what, what brands or products can sell, Good To Go, um, he's got a website set up in uh, .co.nz or .org, I think. Um, but, How many uh, awesome people have come out of the woodwork during this process yeah. and just delivering? <laughs> you know, I, I saw Neat Meats partnered up with Hyperride. You know, how awesome is that? You know, a company that does surfwear and tyres, and yet here they are distributing meat. You know, like There's some epic stuff that come through this. I got um, a great email from a from, from Chivo Restaurant, actually, and, he, and the guy was just... Jeremy, it's just sort of this beautiful email about it to his customers about where is that? He's employing all this stuff still. Um, going through this time, he'd done some deal with one of the local wine companies to sort of help facilitate, and he's getting a couple of tickets. And I just thought, what a great way, as you're saying, Budge, that people are just starting to box a bit clever. And I think, and I hope, I hope effectively, like I sent that email on to a whole bunch of people just going, because I've eaten at that restaurant and know Jeremy a little bit. and you sort of share on it's just like a beautifully worded email and, you, and again you sort of admired the sort of entrepreneurship of it you know it's like hey we're in a tough spot but let's try a few things let's see what happens yeah there's some awesome stories eh? it kind of you know these, these these times of crisis always seem to bring out the best in what we what we have and mm. I, I read a, a, an article the other day of what businesses were founded during the financial crisis and you kind of go yeah, fast forwarding five years from now, where the world's going to be in a far better place because of what we've gone through, and I guess it goes to say what you you should have said up front with that analogy, mm-hmm. Dion, that you know if we can ride this thing out, um, yeah, don't don't fight it, go with it. You know, five years time, we're we're probably going to look back with you know some amazing results as a you know that have been forced upon us, but we always seem to come out uh, in, a, in a much better position. Hey, Dion, yeah, I, th- um, I think sorry, just sorry. one sec, that um, hey, that was that website again? Is it goodtogo.co.nz, uh, Dion? Yeah. Oh, um, let me go, leave it with me. I'll find exactly what it is so I get it right and I'll come back. Okay. We'll get back to you, Nicola. Um, yeah, go for it, mate. Uh, let's quickly tell the story about how you've got your own beer. Go. Sorry, my it's not my own beer. Well, this this one is, but this is the, <laughs> this is the Power Farming Good Oil. Okay. Uh, with uh, how can I? Good George Brewery here in, in the Waikato. Good buggers down there. Uh, essentially, uh, just for a, a marketing and also a sales campaign to, um, you know, to get our get our sales guys out and amongst farmers, and um, you know, without giving them the hard sell, we'll do our jobs better if we know if we know our customers better and know what they want to achieve. So there's no better way of uh, getting to know people than over a over a cold beer. So um, we sent our we sent our guys out to essentially deliver the good oil about us and what we can do for them and. And help them grow. Um, so we, uh, oh well, we're halfway through the campaign, but obviously, um, delivering beer to um, to farmers is not an essential service, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, but we'll we'll reinvigorate that um, beyond the lockdown. But uh, that's going good. But we've uh, we've got about thirty thousand uh, cans of beer winging its way out to to lucky farmers around the countryside. 
And if, uh, if mate, she's a pretty good, mates. she's a pretty good drop. But, uh, the boys at Good George uh, there in Hamilton have uh, made a premium grade lager for us. There you go, it's going down well. Is race they louder? Are doing hand sanitizer, right? They are doing yeah, hand sanitizer. Doing yeah, they make they sanitizer. make gin, or they're playing around with with making gin. So they've got the uh, distillery there. So uh, yeah, I mean they're they're a forward thinking group of people. So they obviously just I guess stuck some nozzles on the top of their gin bottles and I don't know made whatever hand sanitizers made it, which I believe is seventy percent alcohol. So um, yeah, so the, yeah they they ripped into it. So made the most of it, I guess. Uh, what right. I was going to say before, um, you know, like I think we need to be mindful that um, although, you know, this is massive, it's, it's global, it's going to affect and, and destroy a lot of businesses and, and there'll be a lot of people out of work. But um, look, I, I think we need to we need to remain positive and, uh, and people have got a reasonably short memory, you know, like, I mean, um, you know, fast forward six months, nine months, whatever it takes, we, we're going to go back to a semblance of, of normality you know we're, we're going to be watching the all blacks sooner or later we're going to be going to sporting things we're going to be going to restaurants um you know um it's it's no different with other other major major things that have that have happened um sure the shock of it uh, and the and the cost of it uh but that'll play out but the, the demands for most people's businesses mm. will will return and, and everyone will get back into it you know and and, and the reality so. is is that a I, I, you know, look, the, the reality is, is that, you know, a, a well-run business heading into this um, will be well-run on the way out of it, and, and, and a poorly-run business with issues is still going to have them and at the other side of it, you know? If they survive. Yeah, completely agree. If well, they survive, yeah. And, I mean, that's that's the other thing. It is, it is, it's got to be incredibly gutting because, you know, in business, uh, you make a few mistakes, you, you, you take a... I guess you take a punt on something and it doesn't work and you get your ass handed to you, well, you can kind of take that on the chin. But if you look at Air New Zealand, which I don't know that much about the the airline and how it's run, but I mean, they used to, they put up pretty good numbers. They're very popular. I enjoy traveling with them. You know, like their, their, their industry and, and through no, you know, you can't say they didn't see it coming or anything like that. It's just a, a global, weird, anomaly, unprecedented things come in and just wipe them out, you know, like... It's got to be tough to swallow, and 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 there's hundreds of businesses like that that aren't I think getting that's where that up loyalty piece comes in that, uh, as well. And yeah, um, yeah, well, Darren, you talked about uh, going to Chiba, and I think that's where some of that loyalty really kicks through. And um, yeah, we we actually got given a, um, a, a voucher to go to Chiba for dinner, and um, we're going to go and not use that voucher because I think you know it, now's the time to support those those places that you you actually like. And um, I I put up a post the other day around sky and I've, I've copped a bit of grief for it uh, i said guys now's the time to get out and support those guys you know they've put on an amazing product for us for a long a long time our industry relies on a brand like sky being active in the market um, mm. they deliver a great product yeah. in a whole host of ways let's not apparently, walk away from them now apparently they've, they've got some pretty great sort of sports events on there at the moment too some sort of shows from the 90s late 90s mm. Cricket. I think in trying times, I've done an amazing job. There's some bloke running around um, appealing at things that were never remotely going to be out. But um, aside from that, there's, uh, there's the some only, pretty good content. The only, the only time I'm like, people texting me about it, they're all going, oh, turn it on, turn it on. And then the only comment, the other, only other comment they go is like, look at that here, look at that here. I'm like, <laughs> like that. I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know that feeling on this call. This is terrible. <laughs> Mate, I'm the only one the not hiding it. <laughs> Mate, I'm the only one not hiding it. It's good. Yeah. I reckon that this, uh, this show could have a new sponsor by a week's time. Yeah, oh, good oil. Good oil. Yeah. <laughs> I always remember Adam Ferrari getting some uh, getting some glasses for the first time, and uh, they were they didn't have any lenses in them. And I was thinking, oh, you poser. And I and so. I, I sort of got the the first time I got my glasses. I was the screen. I could. I thought, should I really need them? So I wasn't wearing them at all. Now, now I can't even see the screen. I, it's like just this fog of like mist every time I go to open up the screen. I'm like, shoot, it must be something going on. So the aging. What's person, the best sleeve you got, Dion? What was the best sleeve that you, that ever got? Um, that that you either muttered or got muttered to you. <laughs> Oh. Great question, Carl. Yeah, I don't know. It was always in the moment. The best thing about the thing that about sledging, right, is it's it's not so much what was said. Like it, out of context, quite often it doesn't mean that much. 
Um, but in the in the heat of battle with all of it going on, uh, it's sometimes it's just one word in the right way at the right time that can say it. But I remember like um, facing um, Brett Lee in Brisbane, and I knew uh, you have to so you, waiting to bat before a fast bowler comes is they should Sky TV should here's the thing for them, they should they should focus on that batter who's next in whenever the, whenever they go bowling 150. Because it's like it's honestly it's just cool. It's like reality TV. You you're standing up. You're going to the toilet. You're drinking coffee. You know you sit with your team. Then you move away from your team because you're you know they're too noisy. They're not noisy enough. Then it's like and in about half an hour you drain of all your adrenaline because you're like you're just exhausted. So then you want to sleep. And then, then of course the guy gets out and you've got to walk out. You know 50 meters with him to face this guy going 160 or whatever. And um so this happened to me in Brisbane at Gabba. And I got out there, and you're playing Australia, and you know it's like the world eleven. You know, it's like Brett Lee and and you know McGrath and Gilchrist and Hayden and Wars and Shane Warner. It's just like this, you know, world eleven side. And I stand, and I get there, and this um, and the, the Brett Lee's coming out, storming into bowl at me, and he's bowling really, really fast. And the first ball comes, and it sort of like bounces over my middle stump and I sort of like stuck my stomach in and it like whizzes past and I thought should I've actually played I saw that I've actually played it okay you know went over the middle stump and as I sort of turned around to like look follow the ball's tra- trajectory back there's Adam Kilcrest who takes a catch way up <laughs> and he and he sort of throws it to Mark War who's at first slip who throws it to Shane Warren and I'm, I'm sitting there and I can just see all their mouths going like this it was a sort of like surreal moment when I was like, shit, I thought to myself, shit, they're sleeping me. I was like, shit, but I can't hear what they're saying. And then I was like, oh, my God, he's falling so goddamn fast. They're standing so far away. I can't hear them sleeping me. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> small mercy, you know. <laughs> so, it's a pretty cool badge of honour if you're getting sledged by those guys. Oh, yeah, they sleeped everyone. Wasn't that rare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Mark Ward just said, oh, I doesn't want it. something like he doesn't want to be here, fellas." And I was just like, "How does he know?" <laughs> <laughs> um, idea, idea, or thought, or or question from you, Budge? What's what's in your head? A, a big macro out of this whole thing that you've been pondering, or something you've been thinking I'm, about? I'm super pumped. I, I, you know, I'm just the the sports guy on on this. So, um, yeah, it, when it when it comes to to business, I'm pretty um. Yeah, you know, all I really ever think about is the entertainment side of things. But for me, I reckon it's an awesome time. Like we, we're going to appreciate getting together to watch live experiences again. And mm. I think if I if you go back the the last decade, no one's wanted to go to sport. You know, events suck. Yeah, you know, I, I I think I'm running the events that I've run. My biggest motivation is how crap events are, and you know, that creating experience that you actually want to go to. Um, and I, I think coming away from this, we're going to get a, a newfound appreciation for what it's like getting together with your mates and going and, and watching an aligned passion. And I think that's going to be pretty cool coming out of it. I think you'll, you'll again, if you can, for us that can survive, um, you know, the, the five years away from this, I think, you know, you'll see a, a live match day experience being pretty awesome again, I think, and, um, and thriving maybe like it hasn't been for a while. No question. You can do something with that if you want. No, no, no. It's, no, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've been thinking about the, this idea of potentially what you take for granted when all of a sudden it's gone, then you realize that you had it and you chose not to go all those times and all those things you could have done, but you chose but you, not to. And then you go. Do. You know what I'm re- looking forward to? I'm looking forward to a really short rugby season. I'm looking forward to <laughs> a rugby season that actually means the game that you mean something, you know, like a little bit like, um, like the NFL. You know, like I, I just can't wait. They're going to be mm. so much more intensity, so much, so much more exciting to watch. And maybe not even, maybe there won't even be a whole lot of South African teams or whatever. But I can't wait. I reckon the out of here, that they, there could be a model. The thing that bugs me about, you know, professional sport is there, is having to pay the, the piper. We there has to be so much content, but great thing about sport is you want intensity and you want passion and you want. Mm. And, and the longer you make a season, the less of that you have, you know, yeah. um, in, in my view, especially in a contact sport like rugby. So, <clears throat> you know, but even in cricket or, or other sports, you know, the, I, I just think smaller, more focused um, and raise the intensity. And, you know, I, I, I can't wait for that. 
Or there's a question. The moments that matter that that make sport. You know, those mm. those little moments. And if you can if you engineer a scenario that you're creating those moments more frequently. I, I and Mabes and, and Roberta probably heard me say this story. I remember watching a thing called Nitro Athletics, uh, which I was really hung over and so I was just stuck on the couch for a day and I can remember watching it. Uh, and they, they took the, a 3,000 metre race. Uh, you know, how, how, oh, it might have been 10,000 metre race actually. You know, how, how long does that go for 20 odd minutes? Uh, how many seconds of that whole event? Spencer's is running it. Um, <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's very little interesting time in that entire event. So they, they did a, 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 something so simple where the person in last place every lap dropped out. So every 800 metres, you had reward and consequence. I was like, that's awesome. It was so simple. It was just such a simple mm. little tweak that all of a sudden gave it some relevance. And I think we as sport are horribly lazy. Uh, yeah. our, our biggest, we, we, we're so stubborn to tradition and heritage mm. that we, we let it get in the way. You know, if, if we were Coca-Cola, that product would have been cut a long time ago. Um, and, and at times we don't act like that. And I think this is going to be another really good learning for us as an industry to go, we can't afford to, to keep the dead weight and we've got to keep innovating and evolving. Otherwise, yeah, we're, we're simply not going to come out the other side. Mm. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, without picking on rugby, but you so often hear people saying that what's currently going on is not sustainable. We'll do something about it. But, but they don't because of exactly what you just brought up, uh, Budgie, mm -hmm. is um, you've got a lot of history and a lot of tradition and this is what we always do and we've got to do this and we've got to try and make it work. And I don't know, there's so much stuff that's non-negotiable. Well, you know what, guys, it is negotiable and, um, and you're going to have to do it because otherwise you won't survive. So I'm actually, mm -hmm. although I'd love to be watching live rugby now, like what, what will what will come out of it might be something that's that's way better maybe a condensed um a condensed program or something that that you actually want to leap off the couch and and walk to the park you know rather than just uh well whatever's on on friday night i'll watch that and kind of flip between whatever Can we, um, no one's going to walk to the park with you though mate with, with, <laughs> I've, i have walked to the Please. park as is robert with you to watch rugby now i'm, I'm as an equally passionate chiefs fan as you are yeah, but at the start of the game, there's 30 people all sitting in a tight knit group around Maves. Oh, By two minutes in, there's there's like 15 seats empty around him as he's and screaming no at Jamie Nut Brown on the sideline as a for for a dodgy touch call that he's made. No comment. I feel you, Brett. I I've been playing uh, sport next at the park next door every uh, day with my kids. I've got three kids, all nine to 13. And um, my wife and I have been playing um, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a bastardized version of soccer, um, two on three next door. And I had to I had to take myself away a couple of days ago and have a good sit down with myself. Um, well, you're spear tackling your kid. <laughs> my behaviour and, and my leadership skills, uh, or my the you know the what was it, you know my, the you behavior spear tackled that, your kid. So I shoved him out of the way as he kicked <laughs> and, 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 and didn't help him up off the ground. It was like, it was disgraceful behavior. But I was, I, I was just pleased that the, the neighbors watching on didn't call the sips on me or something. But it was, Bernie would chuck you on the cool. couch, man. It's cool. It's called cool passion, oh, Dion, and don't, don't worry about it. Oh, it's a bit like. She felt it. She, she, she was, she was like, yeah, little bastard. <laughs> Yeah, passion's like beer. I'd rather be looking at it than for it. So just. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the quote of the day. Um, oh, geez, text through. He said, what do you guys think of the NRL going, going back in 21st of May into the new format and UFC going fire, fire fest style on an island for international fights? Did you hear about the shit? I did. I read about so, the NRL. Yeah, so. But so not Dana about UFC. Okay, so Dana White's done two deals. He's got um, supposedly it's a, at an Indian reservation. He's gonna he's gonna go out, which is outside of jurisdiction for America to do it. Everyone gets tested in, and for his international fights, he's got access to an island, and they're building the infrastructure, and they're gonna fly everyone in. And and rumor has it it might be Tony Robbins Island because they're homies. And so then they can they basically said from April the eighteenth there will be fights every single week globally. Um, for for all of it in America and and out of it, and so I guess you know adapting to the times and and whatever. What so. island do you want to be on when Lord of the Flies breaks out, eh? 
<laughs> with the UFC fighters. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not, it's not, if you just happen to be sort of on the island by accident, it's like, oh shit, this is a bad. But it's, it's, it's exactly to that point where it's about the, having creativity in a moment to change the strategy of what product you need to create for what the people actually want. It's clear in many mm. sports, they're not getting what people want. And now this is a chance to fall. So we had um, mm. uh, the Warriors CEO uh, last week on, he was talking about, he wants, you know, a hor more horizontal collaboration and, and potential partnerships to actually make the whole experience better. And he's using this time to, I guess, you know, Cameron's using it to, to reset and uh, reimagine what that new experiences or experiences could be. So I think you're right, Carl. It's probably going to, it will, I think it's going to step up the game for a lot of people to to not have an excuse anymore of just the way it was mm. because if people um now that it's all at zero they're going to have to restack it which is kind of perfect that there's a question said how long that glenn Moretti just jumped in how long do you think it will take for sports to recover and do you think the player wages will come down well i think they have come down because it's right. yeah i mean i'm the, I, have, I haven't really thought about this until this conversation but what a great opportunity. I don't know about the wages. I think they have to come down, right? Everything's a reset. I don't know for how long or whatever, but this is such a great opportunity if you're leading a sport organization to just say, hey, you know what? Now now it's forced upon us. Let's take all those great ideas we had and actually be bold and do one um, and, and, and rejig all your deals. You know, what a great opportunity to just say, hey, listen, you know, endless playing and endless sort of the same, the same, the same. But also to listen to the, con the consumer, you know, like yeah. in my business, if I if my moisturizer and my shave cream is, is not working, and I get fifty complaints or or the general com conversation on Facebook is, is about that, if I don't change the formulation or, or make it better, or then then I, my business will fail, you know. And I think there's enough noise around many of the sports to sort of suggest that that's what's needed. You know? Yeah, completely. Agree. Oh, look, there's a there's a there's, there's a good saying, there's, there's a reason why you have two ears and one mouth. And, and I think that's what a lot of sporting organisations <laughs> fall down as they, they keep telling everyone what their new ideas are instead of asking the public what they want. And I think, you know, without blowing too much smoke up Carl's ass, since he's just called me the world's worst person to go to the rugby with, but that's cool, I won't be going with you anymore. Um, uh, <clears throat> is, is that, you know, if, if we take the ASB Classic, you know, like watching tennis you know as a minority sport within new zealand yet the the game day experience going to the asb classic i mean sure there's some there's some talent on the court but i don't think that's why people turn up i think you've asked the right people the right questions and and they turn up satisfied and get what they want not not what not what's easy or what they've always done or i don't know what some guy in a boardroom decided what forty thousand people at eden park want you know so i have one I mean, it's all I have one question around Christian Cullen because I watch those videos that are going around about, you know, it's just got Cullen written on it and it's just like 20 minutes of just him carving people up and you sort of, and you just go, shit, why don't we make, you know, that he was the greatest, you know? But then it's like, is that the rules of the game that created more space for him or is it just the fact that we romanticised it and put it all in and is there is just as much good stuff happening? Or, or what, what? You know, do, how much? What I'm trying to say is, how much are we romanticizing versus how much do we actually love what's in front of us and we don't know it? Well, I think probably that, probably a bit of both. It's, it's feet though too. You know, and there's probably there is a bit of romantic, you know, romanticism around it. I, I'm sure that's the case for a whole host of things. But I, you know, a, a real good example for me is that you know we we often hear we always ask the question of people what was their favourite match during the ASB Classic, and yeah, you know, there, there was one last year that went. It was a it was a tie break, three games of all tie breaks. It went to a super tie break, and that went back and forth for ages. And everyone goes, "Oh man, that was an unbelievable match." For the first hour and a half of that match, I was literally sending the team around the grandstands trying to pump energy into it because they were that flat. And we, we remembered the finish, and it was amazing. The hour and a half preceding it was dead boring, yeah. uh, and yet yet it's completely warped our perspective. And um, yeah, so I, I do think we do have that romantic view of things at times. Um, but I also think we're, we're voting with our feet at the moment and people simply aren't turning up. Um, and, and there's got to be something with that. And I've always had a pretty simple philosophy. Uh, what am I doing this weekend? How do I make money off it? As that's ultimately, you know, we're all our own consumer. You know, I, 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 maybe I'm slightly biased because I don't have to a lot of the time, but I don't pay to go to any, any events because there's very little out there that I actually go, man, that's something I've got to do on the calendar this week. 
Uh, and I think that's a problem. That, you know, that we, mm. we simply don't have enough cool content going on. It's, it's so generic. We can script the experience long before we ever go. We're gonna, and we'd probably be ninety percent right with what we're gonna get. And to me, I think that's you know, in a in a world where I can watch a Cirque du Soleil show on YouTube, we've got to be better than that. Well, the other thing as well is that there's so much choice out there that you know, if there was, I don't know, if there was soccer or rugby to watch this weekend and one game of each like you choose one and you'd be happy with it but the problem is is there's like 74 different choices no matter what you choose you're going to be thinking i probably should have done something else or looking over the fence or whatever so it's kind of like there's just so much out there it's it's hard to be that one that that wants to to do it differently you know mm. the player payments one's an interesting one deal and, I, and uh, I, I don't know that i think it, you'll see it, it level off in the short term, but I think it's going to go back to our norm pretty quickly. So I, I, we're so obsessed with celebrity, we're even more so than I think we've ever been. That I, I you know, the the stupid money that these superstars are getting, um, uh, and that I mean, outside of New Zealand, because in, in reality, our New Zealand sports stars are yeah, a, a drop in a drop. Of water. Um, but you know, I, I think it'll go back pretty quickly because we're. Yeah, you know, we provide escapism. We, we, you know, the hero nature of our our lives. I think, unfortunately, it it still filters through to the top. And as as best as we all care at, at times like this, are going, well, what does player rank five hundred in the world do? What, how do we make sure we're supporting them? Pretty quickly, it all got, always seems to to go back to those guys at the very pointy end as well. Paul Baines, uh, rugby has always been arrogant about its fan base rather than trying to grow it. I feel like um, my favourite thing at the moment is NFL. Robert, Robert and I have a good passion, although his... Um, <clears throat> Stuff his... you, Dion. <laughs> hey, listen, they might be good for them. Who knows? Right? You know? uh, well, now with this, I don't think who's, they can finish the stadium. Well, we know who Robert's team is. Who's your team? Uh, I'm the oh, he's, he's changed. He's changed three times in the last six years. Let's talk about the Broncos. Oh, no. Nah, I mean, Dallas. Oh, no. Nah, Patriots no, are looking I mean. Actually, I, I just found a hat. Oh, <laughs> I started with the Jets. Well, Jets. I didn't know anything about them, and I liked their uniforms. So that was the that was the depth of uh, of um, decision making. But then I worked out how bad they played. Oh, there we go. No Brady this year, though, mate. No Brady now. That'll, yeah. That's a that's a. Hat yeah, it's an old hit, though. It's an old hit. Yeah. It's an old hat. <laughs> but I, but I love about what I love about. Um, you know, I get the fan pass and, and watch it. And, you know, I, I came to it late. So one of the things, like having been a sportsman, I didn't I don't like listening to some of the commentary. I know I know of games that I, you know, I got bored with it. You know, I know cricket too well. I, I can't listen to the commentary without sort of picking holes in the commentary, whereas I can be a genuine fan with NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like it from that perspective, and I'm still learning the game. But um, and but I love the intensity, you know. Like they have thirteen regular season games, seventeen if you make the Super Bowl, and it, you know you you are ten games, eleven games into the season before there's a dead rubber. You know, it's, it's really really late into the season, and I just think that there's a lesson in there for all sports. It's you know mm-hmm. like you have got to keep as many teams and as much alive as you can. But I will think I also think they've got the side thing going on. I've got a thirteen year old son who loves the Patriots. He's a Patriots fan. But it'll be he'll, his allegiance will be tested now that Brady's gone. But, um, but, um, but you know, we talk about trades. We so so it's like this mechanism. We talk as much about the trades and the side deals that are going on that go on throughout the season as we do about the results. You know, there's this whole mm. sort of subplot that goes on which they've managed. The storylines story they've turned line. into, they've crafted. It's 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 storytelling. Hundred percent. But that but. They've managed to do a thing which I've never felt. So when I first started getting into it, I went to it. Everyone was just like, Raiders is gnarly, cool, dope. We'll go, Black Holes is crazy shit. All right, man, go there. And I've been to All Blacks, um, uh, Australia, All Blacks match. I'm a Kiwi, and I felt that. And then I went as a stranger to Oakland to an NFL game against the it was the um, Chicago Bears, and I felt 10 times more hyped with the vibe, experience, energy, Ooh. momentum, passion, just emotion for strangers than I did when I was a New Zealander at the New Zealand versus Australia. And and I've it's funny you say that because I totally I totally agree. Each different part is this, you know, it's this culture around all the way from tailgating to brand to merchandises to 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 exactly right. Trades to just everything becomes so it's this more 
I know tangible pieces at every different touch point, right? The simple thing that that rugby is missing out on in New Zealand at the moment is you, all of the past players, you know, in Joe Rokotoko or all these legends of the game, you know, who are not that far out of the game. You know, he's probably a little bit too far out now, but but you know, guys who are still playing around the world in the Northern Hemisphere, they're sort of dead to New Zealand rugby whilst they're still living, you know, and alive. And I think. Mm. Uh, that's a real – we're missing out because you've got the young bunch that coming through, but we're only focused on this this these, this um, marketing collateral, such a small group that, we've, that they're focused on. We need to somehow bring those other guys back into the game and, and keep them attached to New Zealand, to the game in New Zealand somehow And because that's marketing collateral. You know, some of my favourite players are playing in England or in Japan yeah. or all over the show, and, and I'm, yet I'm being forced to watch the new guys. I'll watch the new guys. Sure, but I, they need to sort of, um, you know, I need them to do their time and become legends before, but not just cut, not just make that so yeah. straight can away. You, can you Im- can you imagine you a Super Rugby? Uh, can you imagine Super Rugby if every New Zealand professional rugby player was currently playing in New Zealand? Like, imagine what the squads would look like. But what if there was two Japan? If this Toyota came down and they had Dan Carter and Richie McCaw and ten, you know stack full of Aussies and, and Kiwis and, and really good at J- Japanese players, you know, and get, that would be really interesting to watch, you know. Mm. Well, I think the big thing for all of us, and, and uh, I, I learn heaps from you, Dion, every time we catch up, I always come away <laughs> admiring how you go about doing things. Uh, but uh, for me, we've got, to, uh, we've got to stop making excuses. And I, uh, In sport in New Zealand, all we do is make excuses. And uh, I, I, when I first moved home, all I ever heard was, Oh, half of Auckland leaves this time of year. Uh, yeah, and if that's the case, well, that's that's rad. We've got nine hundred thousand people living in Auckland looking for something to do. Should we go do our job? Uh, then I heard we're not a grand slam. And you, you just constantly it's excuse after excuse. And I, if I if I and you guys would all do the same. If we listed the best events in the world to go to, chances are you have no idea who's headlining them. Yeah, you know, if that's Super Bowl, you have, you want to go to Super Bowl for Super Bowl. Uh, who's who's actually on the field is almost irrelevant. Yeah, it's, it's there for Super Bowl. Coachella's sold out before you know who's headlining Saturday night. You know, mm-hmm. to me, that's where we've got, or we, we keep hiding behind, oh, there's issues with our product. Oh, no, no, there's, there's issues with your experience. You're, you're, you've got to create that experience, and the, the product will come through that. That the experience, we, we live in an experience economy now where we have to we have to offer more. We have to slap you in the face with different and be bold. And, um, you know, we're, unfortunately, I think we're, we're so slow to adapt. And I think that's where this situation that we're in now is going to be awesome for our industry because we, we've had to operate at speed. All of the, you know, we've sat for five years having conversations that we've had to just solve in four hours. Um, yeah. you know, and mm. it, it's, it's been awesome. And I think we'll come out of it in a far better shape as a result. Yeah, I, I agree. And if you go back to Dion's original point, like around, um, around his analogy Are with the... Are you looking the, at notes um, again, Brett? I'm looking at this, looking at this, wondering <laughs> if I should pen, drink it. Down. You know, it's a great point, Ben. I'm, I'm actually looking at my phone. I've got a, I've got a hundred club. I don't know if you young guys know what a hundred club is. I've been organised a, a Zoom. Got about 40, 50 people down here at the Tron. 100, 100 drinks in a hundred minutes. So we're all going to zoom in and uh, get stuck into that. It starts at six, so the boys are getting fired up. So that's what my uh, the good oil promotes uh, responsible drinking. I, I really, Absolutely. But I, but going going back to my point around um, yeah responsible drinking and also good oil. Um, <laughs> going back to your sauce. point, like um, you know, if it's out of your control, don't worry about it. You know, like if you're caught in the rip, just just go with it. Um, like going to to Budgie's point, like a lot of a lot of those sports you're comparing overseas do have uh, you know huge popular population bases to pull on. We can't use that as an excuse because we don't have the population. So, so that's that's one of those things that's completely out of our control. Like, unless you want to wait thirty years for more people to turn up, within the next five years, we you know, we might get to five and a half million people. So that's what you've got. So figure out a way to make it work. A mate of mine, a consultant mate of mine, always talks about inconvenient truths and yeah. parking your inconvenient truths. As if otherwise, you're just gonna you're, you're gonna be paralysed by them. Yeah, you know, they are what they are. And so mm-hmm. let's go ahead now and figure out how we work with them and park the inconvenient truth and they'll go and get around them. Well, I reckon, our, I reckon the best example, and I know we've got to wrap this up pretty soon, but I reckon the best example for me is the, the, our boutique vineyards. Um, I reckon that that's the, 
that's how we should view New Zealand sport should should view their product like a boutique vineyard. You know, one how of so? the well, you know, like it, it, you go to a boutique vineyard in anywhere in New Zealand, and it's a special event. You know, it's not it's mm. not it's producing a nice bottle of little bottle of wine, but it, it's usually a fantastic setting. You know, it's got a really nice storyline. It used to be a farm that's turned into such a, the, people have turned these into really beautiful little brands and boutique sort of things. And on the world stage of sport, that's sort of what we are, even at, even at rugby level, you know. And I always sort of think with cricket, we've started to do that. We've got smaller grounds. Rather than trying to sell out, we've got the base, instead of trying to sell out Westpac Stadium or whatever it is down in Wellington, half empty yellow stand seats, which looks terrible on TV, sell out the basin reserve, have people hanging from the rafters, it's sold out. The energy comes through the TV, and you get all your money from the TV rights anyway. But it looks rich, and it's in, and the players yeah. like watching it. And you know, take you know, sides from India or England, they don't want to come to New Zealand. They're at the bottom of the world. But if you take them and play them up in Bongaree, or you play them at Tauranga, at these awesome, beautiful grounds, and you take them fishing on the, mm. and you give them an experience, and you pull out the stadium, all of a sudden it's like that becomes a really amazing experience for them, you know. Mm. Um, mm. and scarcity is a wonderful thing right in any business yes you know, yeah yeah it's yeah well, look it's, 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 it's our point of difference and, right and like, yeah how they've used that so well you know and if we've, we've built a new grandstand and i was hell bent on making sure we weren't adding to our numbers we don't want more numbers we're, we're we're really happy with the numbers we've got the fact that you can't get tickets is what makes us so good uh, the moment that anyone can get it we're gonna we, we lose that demand straight away and we're no longer as cool as what we once were Hey, Rebecca, do you remember that guy that was on last week? I can't even remember his name now. Something uh, like <laughs> No, I, 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 it? no it? he, he looks, he, he, I don't, he I don't know. He had a moustache or something, didn't he? I can't even remember now. Kind of beardy. The, he, he was here, was not the top. <laughs> do you have a prerequisite to not have hair? Because I was just looking at Bruce's picture. Is this, of that yeah, what is the up. name of the and show? Bruce is it? Like he, he like he us. Yeah. <laughs> It's glasses and bald, bald and glasses. You, you're almost there, almost there, Brett. I haven't got glasses. Hey, I've got to go. I've got to go beat my kids at the park. And um, oh, that sounded terrible, didn't it? I mean, beat them at sport at the park. So yeah. Um, so Please I need to them, mate. get in their faces. Yeah, <laughs> Rebecca, you've you got a, you're the pro here. You need to wrap this up Damn. and give it sort of, sort of like tie it all together in a bow. What 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 was it today? What 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 did we do? What did we even discuss? It's a great point, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> no, flipping epic yarns and banter. When life gives um, you apples, make apple sauce. <laughs> yes, done. As long as they're granny splits. <laughs> Good oil. Boys, absolutely lo love that pr privilege, pleasure. Uh, Dion, don't don't go, don't spear tackle your kids anymore. Bernie will put you on the um, couch again. I know, I know what she's oh, like. I'll, I'll tell her. Uh, Brett, Budge, Boisies, thanks, team, and enjoy the rest of the day. Um, enjoy. Have a good one, team. Peace All right, guys. be safe, guys. Stay in your bubbles. Cheers, Cheers Brett. Good luck with the Hundy Club there, Brett. <laughs> <laughs>